Okay, so we will see how to configure these switches in access mode and uh, trunk mode. Okay, let's go to the lab. And here, this type of labs will be visible in your lab section. Okay, and you can open this one. So here we have these two switches. Okay and these virtual PCs and Windows PCs are assigned. I will tell you uh, are connected. See, if you want to add any node in this topology, any device in this topology, you can right click and you can click on node. Okay. And here all the available devices will be visible like this. If you want to add any Cisco router or switch, then you have to go to Cisco IOL, iOS over Linux. And here you need to select one of the images. Where in the image you are able to see this layer three. It is a router image. And this is a layer two means switch image. Okay. So if you want to connect a switch, you will select any of these two images, any one of them. Okay. You can select this one. Here you need to change the name to switch. Then you need to select the icon for switch because by default it will show you icon of a router and here you can select this icon or this one it's up to you okay this is a layer 3 switch icon see here in the image it is showing layer 2 but actually it is a layer 3 switch image okay you just need to select this as a layer 2 because you are going to connect a switch okay and then 5.2 save a switch is added are you able to uh, understand this thing yeah have you ever used evng before no okay no problem uh, you will be familiar with this very soon okay let's say you want to add any router you will right click or you can go to this left panel also in this left panel you will see add an object click, go to node other than this you can right click and node if you want to add a router, you will select Cisco IOL. And from these layer three images, you can select any one of them, like this one. Here I will define RAM 512 MB. It is sufficient, okay? Otherwise you can take it as 1024. It doesn't matter, okay? And here you can change the icon, router. Here you will find many icons, okay? You can select. This is for host name and this is for number of nodes. Yes. Okay. Like if you want to add four routers, you just need to type four. Now it is showing Ethernet interface, Ethernet, and it is showing only one. Right. One means you have four Ethernet interfaces. It is showing one port group. If you will make it two, there will be eight Ethernet interfaces in the device. Okay. But let's make it one for now. One means four Ethernet interfaces. Save this. So you can see four routers are added here, right? If you want to connect them, so here you will see this orange plug. Okay, just drag this and uh, drop this to the destination device. And it will show you the interface. Here you can see on the switch, eight ports are connected. You can select any one switch port, okay? And this is a router. Here you can select any port from these four, E0 by 0, and save. It is connected, right? If you want to delete this, right click delete. If you want to connect this router with this router, you can just select this orange plug and drop it. Okay, and sorry, drag it and then drop it. And here you can select interfaces and save. Okay, if you want to delete this, right click on the cable and delete. If you want to delete all these routers, right click, select all of them, then right click and delete selected. Refresh this page. They are, they will be deleted. I think they were not selected. Okay, now let's say this is your topology. Let's say these devices are already configured. So you can go to left panel. If you want to delete all the configuration, you can go to the setup nodes, okay? And here you will find many options. Start all nodes, stop all nodes, config nodes, wipe all nodes. Let's wipe all of them. 
So all the configuration is wiped. It means it is cleared. Let's start all the devices. Okay. Now here in the topology, you can see this switch one and switch two is connected. Okay. Here I will delete this interface for now because we will not configure ether channel right now. Okay. So I have deleted that. And here you can see this VPC is connected. Now, if you want to add this VPC, then you can right click on the device or sorry on the workspace and you can click on node. Here we have this option VPC. VPC will be a virtual PC which is used to check the connectivity only. Okay, just to verify the practical. This is desktop. Here you can change the icon and save. It is added. This one is VPC. I will show you. You can take the CLI access only on this VPC. And this is a Windows PC, actual Windows PC. If you want to add a Windows, right click on the workspace, then go to Windows. Here we have server also 2016. Okay. But for now, if you want to add Windows, then you can add Windows 7 or 10. So for now, you can add Windows 10, Windows 7. Here you can customize its RAM and CPU, icon, description, name, and number of nodes. Okay. So for now, if you want to add this, you can just scroll down and save. It will be added like this. For now, I am deleting it. Okay. And then you can connect all the devices. So let's start them for now. Here you can see the system status. You can close the lab, you can lock the lab, you can destroy the lab. All the configuration will be deleted. Okay. So here these PCs are connected. I want to assign them into different VLAN on these two switches, switch one and switch two. Okay. So I will configure VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And then I will configure IP addresses on these PCs. We will assign these switch ports into different VLAN and then we will see the configuration for trunk also. Okay. First of all, I will show you how to configure the switch port in access mode. Then we will see how to configure the switch port in trunk port. Now let's take the access. If any one of you wants to set up this at his home, then I can help you. Okay, no problem. Okay, so these switches are started. So we landed on which mode? User mode again, right? Here you can run enable command to take the access of privilege mode. After this, here we can check the VLAN configuration. Here you can see VLAN 1 is by default created. And on this switch, we have eight Ethernet ports and they are all assigned in VLAN 1. Same on switch 2. Show VLAN, right? Now we need to configure some VLANs and then we need to assign interfaces into that those VLANs. Okay. So here we can go to global configuration mode. And let's configure host name switch one. This is switch two. So let's go to global configuration mode and configure host name switch two. Okay. Now, if you want to configure any VLAN, if you want to create a VLAN, you will run a command in global configuration mode VLAN. And after that, you will define VLAN ID. VLAN ID is 10. Name for this VLAN, I can give a logical name HR. Then VLAN 20 name, I can give a logical name sales. So two VLANs are created. Now one more thing, if you want to run any show command in global configuration mode, then you can use do. Do is used to run any privilege mode command in global configuration mode forcefully. Like do show VLAN brief. If you run only show VLAN brief, it will not work, right? It will show you inval invalid input. But if you use do show VLAN brief, then it will show you actual output. Okay. So VLAN 1020 created. Let's go to switch two. Here also let's create VLAN 10. I will give name HR VLAN 20 name sales. Here also two VLANs are created to show VLAN brief. 
okay now we need to assign these switch ports into these vlans okay let me make it more transparent wait okay so interface e0 by 0 is connected with windows pc this one i will assign this switch port into vlan 10 so let's go to switch 1 this is switch 1 interface e0 by 0 right so we are going to assign a single vlan on the switch port it will be configured in access mode okay we configure access mode on the switch ports where we connect endpoints where we connect endpoints okay because one endpoint will be assigned into a single vlan so it will be connected to the switch port on that switch port we will assign that vlan okay that individual vlan now here we always connect endpoints like your pc laptop desktop or printer ip camera these devices okay so to configure this switch board in access mode you have to run a command before configuring it let me show you the default modes okay e0 by 0 switch board i am going to check the layer 2 properties of this e0 by 0 interface okay using this command show interface ethernet 0 by 0 switch board enter here it is saying switch port is enabled because by default all the switch ports are enabled okay administrative mode dynamic auto operational mode access administrative trunking encapsulation negotiate what else trunking encapsulation methods are available can anyone tell me trunking encapsulation methods other than negotiate which two trunking encapsulation methods are available dot one q and ISL. okay so here we will see this is negotiate it means dtp is running negotiation of trunking is running it means dtp is on dynamic trunking protocol okay so for now it's operational mode is static access and administrative mode mode is dynamic auto it means dtp is running dynamic trunking protocol other than this here you can see access mode and it is assigned in vlan one by default okay native vlan i will tell you in trunking what is native vlan it is one by default voice vlan none okay and leave it for now we will see these things later so let's configure interface e0 by 0 in access mode with this command switch port mode access switch port mode access okay switch port access vlan 10 to assign this interface into vlan 10 okay here you can add one line we configure access mode on the switch port where endpoints are connected okay and we configure trunk port on the switch port where other which router means other network device is connected, not the endpoint. WLC, firewall. So whenever you connect your endpoint, you can say that on access layer switches, you will configure access port, right? So E0 by 1. It is in VLAN 20. Switch port mode access. Switch port access VLAN 20. Exit. Do so VLAN brief. Here you can see VLAN 10 and 20. They are created. Okay. And uh, the interfaces are assigned in the VLANs. Okay. Now let's go to switch 2. On switch 2 also interface E0 by 1. Ethernet 0 by 1. It is assigned in VLAN 10, this Windows PC. Here I will configure switch board mode access. Switch board access VLAN 10. We created the VLAN already. Interface E0 by 0. Switch board mode access. Switch board access VLAN 20. It is assigned in VLAN 20. Do so VLAN D, E0 by 0 and E0 by 1. Okay, this is how we configure access port. 
if you want to check the running configuration of any specific interface you can run this command see here we have a command do show running config right it will show you the full running configuration of your device of the switch like here these two interfaces are configured right and uh, here you will see some other default configuration is there okay and uh, here you can see these commands are running so it will show you the whole running configuration but if i just want to check interface e0 by 0 configuration then i can run this command do show running config interface e0 by 0 or e0 by 1 okay like this if i want to check the running configuration on multiple interfaces then here i can use one command see all these show commands will be running on privilege mode i was using do that's why i was able to run these commands in global configuration mode also so for example here if i run, if i am running show running config then here i can put this pipe this is pipe okay this pipe is used to modify your output like here in show running config it is showing the full running configuration right but if i want to see a specific section of the running configuration then i can modify this output using pipe and after pipe you will find multiple options exclude include section begin okay so let's say section interface section interface enter so it will show you only the running configuration for interfaces these commands are very important in troubleshooting okay you you need to know about show commands as many as you can know okay you can find them just to run all the show commands to check outputs in different methods. Okay. Clear. So you can check the VLAN again. So VLANs are configured and they are statically assigned on interface. Okay. So here I can write to configure VLAN, sorry, to configure interfaces in access mode and assign interface you have to go to global configuration mode okay and in global configuration mode you will run interface e0 by 0 here you will run switch port mode access because you need to change the mode of the switch port to access first of all and then you need to assign a vlan switch port access vlan 10 for example and exit then your interface will be assigned in VLAN 10. Okay. After this, if I want to configure the switch ports in trunk mode, then we can use the static trunking and dynamic trunking, right? This access mode configuration is clear, right? It is very easy to configure it as a static port or static, uh, sorry, as a static access port. Okay. Now, if I want to configure trunk, to configure trunk, we can use two methods first one is called static trunk and dynamic trunk okay static trunk and dynamic trunk dynamic trunk will be formed or will be created using dtp dynamic trunking protocol we will discuss about this okay so first first of all let's discuss about a static trunk okay the static trunk will be configured manually on the switch port okay and switch port will become or will create trunk switch port will create trunk without negotiating encapsulation protocol On trunk, we use one of two encapsulation protocol, 802.1Q or ISL. Okay, I will tell you about these encapsulation protocol, but for now we are discussing about static trunk and dynamic trunk. So you need to understand this thing. If you are configuring a static trunk, then 
you don't need to negotiate any trunking and cancellation protocol. We have to define it manually. Okay. In static trunking and encapsulation protocol will be defined manually. Okay, will be defined manually. So when you will configure trunk between the switches, we have to define trunk encapsulation protocol. Because let's say the switch one is sending the traffic for VLAN 10 to switch 2. When these users will try to communicate with each other, VLAN 10 traffic will be sent over this link, right? So how switch 2 will identify that this traffic is coming for VLAN 10 or 20. So with this traffic will be encapsulated using some encapsulation protocols like 802.1Q and ISL. 802.1Q is also called dot one q Okay. This is 802.1Q. It is also called dot one q Okay. So I will tell you about the characteristics of these encapsulation protocol, how they work. But for now, if you configure a static trunk, then this encapsulation protocol will be configured manually on the switch port and switch port will create the trunk without negotiating any encapsulation protocol. Okay. This is called a static trunk. And if I talk about dynamic trunk, in dynamic trunking, switch ports will create trunk after negotiating encapsulation protocol. ISL or dot one q ISL or dot one q okay means uh, here we have these two protocols see if you are using Cisco switches then by default ISL will be negotiated okay if you are using different vendor switches then 802.1q will be used but in Cisco switches also we use 802.1q okay we don't use ISL that much in the network because uh, there are some drawbacks in ISL inter switch link. I will tell you about that. Okay. So when you are using dynamic trunking, then negotiation of encapsulation protocol will be performed. Okay. We configure DTP to perform dynamic trunk or to create dynamic trunk okay so we will discuss about dtp separately okay now let's configure a static trunk okay how will you configure a static trunk so to configure a static trunk we have to define encapsulation protocol and we have to set the mode to trunk manually. So you need to run this kind of command. You will go to interface. Okay. Like in the topology, we will configure trunk between switch one and switch two on interface E0 by two on switch one and on interface E0 by three on switch two. Okay. So here let's take interface E0 by two. So here you need to use encapsulation protocol okay you need to use encapsulation protocol like switch for trunk encapsulation this is a command okay and here you will define dot one q or isl okay after that you will run switch port mode trunk and exit okay so this is this is the command which will be used to configure a static trunk so in static trunk you have to define encapsulation protocol manually okay and uh, then you can configure this trunk mode now in a static trunk we can disable dtp right we are not using dtp so for that you will go to interface configuration mode e0 by 2 and here you will run switch port 
no negotiate. Okay. And exit. This is the command to disable DTP. We don't use DTP in real time mostly. Okay. We configure trunk using a static trunk only. And dot when queue will be used mostly. I will tell you about the difference between both of the protocol. So this is how we configure a static trunk. Okay. And to disable DTP, you can use this command. Switch port, no negotiate. On the same interface where you configured a static trunk. Okay. Clear. Now let me tell you about these encapsulation protocol dot when queue. Uh, it is called the 802.1 queue actually. And in short, it is called dot when queue. Is an open standard protocol. Is an open standard protocol used to encapsulate traffic over the trunk port. It, it is open standard, so it can be used in different vendors. You can, sorry, it can be used between different vendor switches. Like if you have one switch from Cisco and you have one switch from HP or other vendor like Aruba or any, anything, then you can use this dot one q protocol to perform trunk, to create the trunk, you can say. Okay. Now dot one q will add only a four byte information in an existing packet. Okay. Dot one q will add only four byte information. Like if I talk about ISL, ISL will add 30 byte extra information in the existing packet. Okay. But here dot one q adds or it adds only four byte in an existing packet okay to uh, in an existing packet which contains vlan okay which contains vlan identifier you can see vlan id clear so this dot one q supports untagged traffic dot one u supports untagged traffic untagged traffic means the traffic which is generated by the switch to perform its local operations okay to perform its local operations like cdp packets dtp packets okay vtp packets pagp packets lacp packets dot one q supports native vlan also native vlan now what is native vlan native vlan is used to carry or is used to forward untagged traffic is used to process untagged traffic okay by default it is vlan 1 you can change it but when you are going to configure the trunk on switch port then native vlan must match on both of the switches okay clear native vlan must match so this is dot one q protocol it will add only four bytes in an existing packet and if i talk about isl Enter switch link ISL is a Cisco proprietary protocol. It adds 26 bytes ISL headers, sorry, ISL header and four bytes ISL trailer. Taylor, okay. So overall, it adds 30 bytes. So it will increase extra overhead on this packet, right? It does not support untagged traffic. ISN is not widely used, okay. On many of the Cisco switches, it is not supported now. Okay, it does not support untagged traffic. It does not support native VLAN. So these two encapsulation protocols will be used and dot one q is widely used okay here also we are going to configure 802.1q protocol any doubt to configure the static trunk we have to go to interface configuration mode let's go to the topology so this is switch one 
here I want to configure interface E0 by 2 as a static trunk. So interface E0 by 2. Here switch for trunk encapsulation dot one k. Okay. Here you can define encapsulation dot one q ISL and negotiate. Negotiate will be used when we are using DTP. But for now, I am configuring a static trunk. So switch for trunk encapsulation dot one q and switch port mode tank. This is used to configure static trunk. Same you will configure on switch to interface E0 by 3. On switch 2, it is E0 by 3. Switch for trunk encapsulation. Sorry, dot one q switch port mode trunk. And to disable DTP, switch port no negotiate. On this switch, all the commands will be running, which are also available on your actual switch CLI, this physical switch CLI, right? Switch port no negotiate to disable DTP. Okay, now you can check interface properties using this command interface E0 by 2 switch port on switch 1. You can see it is enabled and its administrative mode is trunk. Administrative mode or sorry, operational mode is trunk encapsulation dot one q operational tank trunking encapsulation dot one q and negotiation of trunking is off. This means it means DTP is, is not running. Okay. For interface E0 by E0, it is in access mode. Okay. So interface is enabled. Our administrative mode and operational mode is access. Negotiation of trunking is off because it is access port. Okay. Clear. So a static trunk and a static access is configured. To verify trunk interfaces, you can run to show interfaces trunk. It will show you trunk ports like this. If you are seeing this mode on, it means it is a static trunk. Interface E0 by 2 encapsulation protocol is 802.1Q. It is trunking, okay, and native VLAN is one by default. If native VLAN is mismatched, then trunk will not be configured. VLAN allowed on trunk, all the VLANs are allowed by default. VLAN allowed and active in management domain, VLAN 1, 10, and 20, they are actively, they are configured, you can say, okay. Other than this, to show VLAN brief. Now, same VLAN users will be able to communicate with each other. You just need to configure IP addresses on VPCs and Windows PCs. Okay. Clear. So on switch two also you can check. To show interface trunk. Here it is also configured as trunk. And mode is on. It means a static trunk. And encapsulation 802.1Q. Status is trunking. Now, if I want to configure IP address on this VPC5, this one is VPC5. It is assigned in VLAN 20. In VLAN 20, I will use 10.1.2.0 slash 24 network. On this VPC5, I will give IP 10.1.2.5. And then it's subnet mark. This is your VPC, OK? It will not give you any GUI. On this VPC, you can configure IP, subnet mask, gateway, DNS, domain name, and you can verify the connectivity between two connected endpoints. And in the same topology, I am connecting Windows PC also. I will show you that, okay? And gateway, for now, gateway will not be configured, right? We are able to, we are going to communicate within the network, not out of the network, okay? So if you are not communicating with different network users, you don't need to configure any gateway. So IP is configured, okay? Show IP. You can run this command to check IP configuration on VPC. IP address is 10.1.2.5. This is subnet pass. And I have not configured any gateway, okay? And to save the configuration, here you can run save. Configuration is saved. If you want to configure, if you want to save the configuration on Cisco switches, Cisco router, you can run write memory command this is a command to save the configurations write memory or you can run copy running config startup config yes this configuration will be saved okay in nvram see the running configuration will be saved in ram you can say 
and uh, if the device is restarted or you shut down the device and you start it again you will not find the running configuration because ram will be clear but if you save this configuration using this command copy running config startup config then the con running configuration will be saved as a startup configuration in nvram okay so if you save the configuration once and uh, if you reload the device the configuration will remain in the device okay because it is saved in nvram i will tell you about these components okay of the network devices when we will start routing at that time i will tell you routed boot sequence and the different components so for now you can run this command to save the configuration or you can run write memory it is also called wr okay same thing now let's go to VPC 6. Here also let's configure IP. VPC 6 is assigned in VLAN 10. Here I will assign 10.1.1.6. You can assign any IP address from the network used for VLAN 10. It is configured and you can save. Here you can check show IP. It will show you IP configuration on this VPC. After this, let's go to Windows PC. This is Windows PC 3. It is connected with switch 1. Let me increase the size. Here you can change the resolution. And it will be 1280 and 768 bits. Oh, megapixel, not bits. Click OK. We have another Windows. Here also I will change the resolution, okay, because by default it will take a very bad resolution, this one. Okay, you need to make it 1280, 7, It is changing, okay. now here it is changed. So on this PC, you will configure IP address. This is Windows PC. Okay. Go to network adapter settings. Open this. And here change adapter settings. This is your LAN local area network. Here we will go to properties. In properties, you will find IPv4, TCP, IPv4. And let's assign IP address. Here, this is Windows 3. And it is connected here behind switch one okay so here i will configure 10 1 1 3 it is in vlan 10 and subnet mask click on okay other than this we have another windows pc this windows 4 it is assigned in vlan 20. What happened? It's not up or something. Click on apply. Keep changes and OK. Now let's assign IP address here also. Go to land adapter settings, then properties. Here I will configure 10.1.2.4. It is in VLAN 20, right? So these same VLAN users will be able to communicate with each other, okay, via trunk port. But different VLAN users will not be able to communicate with each other for now. So here I can try to ping VPC 5 from Windows 4 and from Windows 3 VPC 6. If you want to ping from VPC, then you can go to VPC 5. Ping same VLAN user. Okay. It is Windows 4, 10.1.2.4. It is reachable. We are able to ping, right? So it is sending that, it is saying that 84 bytes from 10.1.2.4 received and TTL is 128. See, when this TCP IP was implemented by the manufacturer, manufacturer, you can say, uh, manufacturer customized it, customized it according to their requirement to make it unique, okay? 
like I took the example of Android, right? So here TTL value is 128 for Windows. Now let's go to VPC 6. Here I can ping VPC, Windows 3. From VPC 6, I can ping Windows 3. And it is 10113. It is reachable. Okay. If you want to verify the reachability from Windows, you can go to your Windows PC and you can open CMD. Here you can ping 1011. This is Windows 3, so 6. It is reachable. Windows 6 is also, sorry, VPC 6 is also in VLAN 10. So same VLAN users are able to communicate with each other. They are connected with different switches, but they are communicating using trunk port. But if I try to ping 10124, then it will not be able to reach this 10124 because it is a different network IP address. And to reach this different network IP address, we have to use a gateway. Okay. We have to use a gateway. Clear. So we will configure that later. But for now, the same VLAN users are able to communicate through the trunk port. So we configured trunk statically right, right? We configured it statically. Now, if you want to configure trunk dynamically using dynamic trunking protocol, then what will happen? Let's see. Any doubt till now? Configure static trunk. You have to run switch port trunk encapsulation. I think I have run this command. Yes, the commands are written. Okay. And now let's discuss about DTP, dynamic trunking. To configure dynamic trunking, we have to use DTP. Okay. It is called a dynamic trunking protocol. Okay. So DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol, first of all. used to create trunk dynamically after negotiating trunking encapsulation protocols okay by default it is enabled on all the switch ports okay on switch ports DTP enabled switch will send or DTP enabled switch port will send DTP messages after every 30 seconds to a multicast MAC address. to a multicast MAC address 0, 1, double, 0. Then we have 0, triple C, all C. This is the multicast MAC address used for DTP. Whenever any switch will generate DTP message and it will send it to the neighbor switch, it will use its multicast MAC address, okay? So you will find this MAC address as the destination MAC address of DTP packets. Okay. And wherever DTP protocol is enabled on the switch port, these messages will be received. Okay. Because it is a multicast MAC address. Now to configure DTP, we have to use or we have to define modes on the switch port. First of all, we have dynamic desirable and dynamic auto. Okay. This mode switch port will actively 
initiate to create the truck. Means it will send DTP messages, right? Dynamic desirable. It will send DTP packets to the on the Ethernet interface so that neighbor switch can receive it and they can create a truck. Okay. It is called actively initiating to create the truck. Then dynamic auto. This mode. Switch port will not actively initiate to create the trunk. It will listen for DTP packets. If other end switch will send DTP packets to this to the switch port where dynamic auto is configured, then only it will create trunk, it will perform trunk. Otherwise, it will not create any trunk. So let's say this is a switch one and switch two. Here, if you configure dynamic desirable, dynamic desirable trunk will be configured. Okay. Both are Cisco switches, so ISL protocol will be negotiated, right? And one side is dynamic desirable, other side is dynamic auto. Then also trunk will be configured because this dynamic desirable will send DTP messages to switch to and switch to will create the trunk. But if both sides are dynamic auto, dynamic auto, then they will not be able to create the trunk. Okay, then they will not be able to create the trunk. By default, DTP is enabled on the switch port and the default mode is dynamic auto. That's why they don't create trunk automatically because both sides will be dynamic auto, dynamic auto, right? If you configure one side as dynamic desirable, then they will be able to negotiate the trunk. They will be able to create the trunk, okay? Any doubt? Now, so these are the different modes. <clears throat> now let's go to the topology. Here the interface E0 by 2 and E0 by 3 on switch 2. So first of all, on switch 1, I will clear the configuration of interface E0 by 2. It was configured as the trunk port. So I changed the configuration to default. Okay. Same on switch 2. Here also, I want to clear the configuration on interface E0 by 3. So default interface E0 by 3. On this interface also, configuration is cleared. Now you can check there is no trunk. There is no trunk. If I show the switch port mode, interface E0 by 3 switch port, it will show you DTP is on and mode is by default dynamic auto. On switch one also do show interface E0 by 2 switch port. Here also mode is dynamic auto. DDP is on. Negotiation of trunking is on. But both are dynamic auto. So they cannot create the trunk, right? Now, if I want to create the trunk, at least one side I have to configure as dynamic desirable, right? So interface E0 by 2. Now here switch port mode first of all switch port trunk encapsulation negotiate okay right now i'm not defining isl or dot one q i am putting negotiate and switch port mode dynamic desirable or auto so here you can give desirable one side is already configured as auto so as soon as i will configure this side as dynamic desirable they will negotiate the trunk do so interface trunk Trunk is negotiated. Here you can see interface E0 by 2 mode is desirable and ISL. Previously, when we checked this output, it was showing 802.1Q and there was no N because it was statically defined. It was not negotiated, right? This time it is negotiated and ISL. So this is trunking native VLAN is 1. You can go to switch 2 also. Do show interface trunk. Here also you can see NISL. ISL is negotiated because both are Cisco devices. And here mode is auto, which was the default mode, right? If you configure this as well 
like dynamic desirable then both will be dynamic desirable dynamic desirable no problem otherwise this is also correct no issue okay one side can be dynamic auto and other side can be configured as dynamic desirable what is n uh, n isl n means negotiated okay yes right because previously when i run this command to check the trunk when i configured a static trunk then there was no n yes right because here i defined this encapsulation protocol manually it was not negotiated but this time isl is negotiated that's why it is showing n and here you can see i run this command as well uh, where is that okay we configured switch one this one switch port trunk encapsulation negotiate not dot when q or isl right if we are using negotiate, ISL will be preferred one because they are Cisco devices. Cisco devices. And if it would have they been are different devices, it then dot one q will be used always. Mostly we use 802.1q. dot one q. Okay, within between Cisco devices also we use 802.1q. dot one q. Because if you are using ISL, it will increase extra overhead of thirty bytes on your packet, right? So we don't use ISL mostly, but you can configure it like this. Okay. And if you want to capture the packet in this topology, then you can right click on the device. Okay. Here you will find capture button. And then you can go to E0 by 3 interface means you will capture on E0 by 3 interface. It is connected with switch one. So I can enable capture on this interface so that I can see DDP packets and other communication happening, right? Enable it again. If it is no, no, not enable it again. It is here. It is opening. Here you can see this is a small window. It will be saved here. Okay, you just need to take the access. So this is your wire chart. Now here just wait for 30 seconds. It will send DTP messages. Then I will show you this one. Here you can see DTP. See, this is an individual packet which will be used, or you can say this is a this is an individual MAC address which will be used for DTP, CDP, L, UDLD, VTP. Okay, not LLDP. LLDP is separate. It is different. Okay, CDP, VTP, DTP, PAGP, UDLD. For all these protocols, this destination MAC address can be used. Okay, zero one double zero zero C all C. You can learn it like this. It will be in flow. Zero one double zero zero C all C. Okay, close. Here I have stopped the capture. Okay. Here you can search for the packets. DTP. This is dynamic trunking protocol packet. Okay. You can see DTP is a layer two protocol. There is no IP header in the packet, right? This is DTP header, then LLC layer header for data link, and this is uh, Ethernet header 822.3, right? Wired Ethernet header standard is 822.3, and then this packet is converted into frame, and 60 bytes are going on the wire. Okay, here you will find this destination MAC address, with, sorry, this one, destination MAC address, which belongs to DTP, VTP, CDP, PAGP, UDLD. This is DTP packet dynamic trunking protocol it is sending operating mode and administrative mode trunk auto okay here it will show you trunk and auto is configured clear so we will see many of the packet captures okay if you want to check for dtp vtp you can enable the capture here it is very easy to enable the capture okay otherwise in real time network when you are going to perform capture on the switch you have to use a span switch port analyzer right you have to send a specific traffic to a switch port where you can collect the logs collect the wire chart logs okay any doubt in today's class no oh, we are good uh, i want to confirm one thing uh, that uh, trunk link to be formed one side has to be uh, desirable right yes if you are using dtp then one side has to be configured with dynamic desirable other side can be dynamic auto otherwise you can configure dynamic desirable dynamic desirable on both of the switch ports 
and what if one is trunk and one is auto or desirable see if you are using a static trunk on one side and you are using DTP on the other side, then a static trunk will be showing in the output. Okay, because if you are using DTP, then it's it needs to be enabled on both sides. Okay, got it. Thank you. So today we have seen the communication within the broadcast domain, right? And we configured a trunking also, access mode, trunk port. See, these are the basic switch operation you can say, uh, excluding trunk. Okay. But if I talk about switch operation, how it creates the MAC address, how it uh, forwards the packet, like if it is getting any unicast packet, then how it will forward it. Or if it is getting a broadcast packet, then how it will forward it. So you need to know about different packet forwarding on the switch. I will also tell you about unknown unicast forwarding. Okay, unknown unicast forwarding. See, there is a kind of attack which is called cam overflow attack. Okay. Can cam overflow attack what will occur in this kind of attack? You can say when attacker will try to make your MAC address table full, okay, up to its maximum capacity, like 65535 MAC addresses can be learned. And when the MAC address table will be full, then new MAC addresses cannot be learned, right? So let's say this switch is under attack, okay. Let's say on this switch, attacker has performed cam overflow attack and it is sending thousands of packets with different MAC addresses so that this switch MAC address table can be full. Now, if its MAC address table is full and at the same time, some real user is trying to send the packet to any destination for which this switch does not have the MAC address in its MAC address table, then switch performs unknown unicast forwarding. Okay, then switch performs unknown unicast forwarding. Okay, it will flood that unknown unicast packet out of all the interfaces within that VLAN and then whatever PC or whatever endpoint is connected with the switch for which this packet was distant, it will receive it and rest of the PCs will drop that packet. It is called unknown unicast flooding. Okay. We will see this also. I will show you it in layer two security. Okay. So trunking is configured and switch port modes are configured and we have seen the communication within VLAN. Tomorrow we will discuss about inter VLAN routing using a router which is called ROAS router on a stick and we will also use layer 3 switches using SVI switch to virtual interface so that we can create communication between different VLAN users. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. So today we have seen that different VLAN users were not communicating because today we are using these switches as layer two. Tomorrow I will configure these switches as layer three switches also so that we can create communication between different, different VLAN users or different network users using layer three switch. Okay, first I will show you IVR inter VLAN routing and then we will discuss about layer three switch means uh, how will you create communication using layer three switch between different VLAN users. Okay. I will share your public IP and credential very soon. Okay. Maybe tonight itself. So to download event client pack, you just need to go to here windows client side. If you are using windows and you need to click on this first link, then even the client pack will be downloaded. Then I will tell you how to install all these things. Okay.